welcome to Stage, Screen, and In Between with Helen. I'm Helen Primus. I have a, a really great filmmaker today. His name is Ryan O'Leary, and he's been nominated as the best director in the 2020 Long Island International Film Expo. How exciting for his movie called The Lost Weekend. Welcome, Ryan. So nice to have you on the red carpet. Hi, thanks for having me. It's definitely interesting uh, doing the red carpet this way. It's very uh, unusual and great. <laughs> it is. It's kind of convenient, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so now your, your m movie is really very interesting. It's about online dating. And it's, it's about uh, a Charlie Monaghan, right, that has yeah. a, a rough breakup. And he goes online to try to find somebody new. So let me ask you this. Is this from some kind of personal experience of your own that you decided to write this, Ryan? Um, let me say, uh, maybe, maybe if it was. Um, it's, you know, all the things that look good in the movie and make him seem like a cool guy, that's on me. All the stuff that makes him seem like a bit of a loser, that's definitely made up. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely based on some real life experience and uh, definitely uh, an unusual, you know, just, kind of getting into uh, com commenting on kind of today's uh, dating culture and how people meet and how people try to relate to each other and how they present themselves online one way versus how they do in real life and then how that affects personal relationships at home with family and friends. So Yeah. So now this was shot uh, before the pandemic, right? Yeah. Yes. What did you film on? What did you tape on? We shot on the red, I believe the red epic, uh, I want to say red epic dragon. And yeah, we shot for three days. We did most of the interiors you see in the movie we did in Long Island. And then most of the exteriors were in the Rockaways. So it was a very New York production. And uh, yeah, we were lucky that we did this before the pandemic. I know a lot of people right now that are getting back in the production and there's a film that I'm trying to do in the next few months. And uh, yeah, definitely seems a lot harder to make things now with uh, social distancing and testing and everything. Do you date online? Uh, no, well, I, I, I have a long-term girlfriend now who I, I may have met that way, no, no comment. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so, but I, I've been uh, con content now for a few years with the same person, it's been great. So now you've won about 17 awards in the past, right? Was that for your last movie? Uh, yeah, it was from it was from this one going. So this film's been going around for a little over a year now, and like the uh, because of the pandemic, a lot of the festivals like Life got pushed back a few months. So it's, yeah. we have this kind of weird thing where, yeah, it was playing for like about a, almost a full year by the time everything kind of locked down. So that so yeah, it's been this film, and then my I did a feature film called The Backseat, which was mostly shot in Long Island back in uh, 2012. We shot that, and that one was like you know, one of the first films of mine that like did like a somewhat serious round of festivals. Um, and then I've been fortunate enough with life where um, I think this might be my fourth or fifth film that's played there. I remember they, I went to five towns college in uh, Dix Hills and they gave uh, I think they gave you like a, a big discount code or submission. I remember one of my professors got me to submit one of my student films there. And like, I didn't think it was going to get in or anything that it did. So it, it's been cool getting to come back, you know, every few years with a new project and getting to see Debbie and everyone. It's, it's been really special. Yeah, I'm familiar with Five Towns College. I'm from Dix Hills myself. All so right. I know. Nice. Yeah, so I am. So um, did, you got a degree then because I was going to ask you, did you learn mm -hmm. from going to school or just by doing? So you did go to Five Towns, right? Yeah, yeah. I graduated in 2011. Got the BFA in film video, as they called it back then. And right. you know, it was a good experience for you. I thought the one thing that I think Five Towns. I, I can't speak to it as much now, but I know when I was there, what it had going for it that other schools didn't. They really let you go out and make stuff. My my senior year, I did four different films, like of my own that I directed, and you know, the faculty was supportive, and you know, there's a lot of good gear, and it was really great kind of getting that experience to just go out and make things. I know people who go to like NYU or some of these bigger schools, they get to maybe do one film a year. So with five times, it was great to kind of just have the experience to make a lot of things and make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, so. I agree with you. You learn by making the mistakes and you learn by doing, you know? So now uh, this film, The Lost Weekend is, is a short, 
right? Yeah. And uh, what do you find the difference between doing a short? Is this your calling card to do something a little longer? Or are you sure. going to just be on to something else? Yeah, well, this is a weird development process with this. So this was actually written, there's a feature film called The Lost Year that I wrote you know, about five or six years ago that in 2016, we came very close to making the full length feature version and it would have cost a bit of money. And we raised, I want to say like 10 to 15% of our budget. And we had some great actors attached at one point. Um, an actor that I really admired was maybe going to produce it with, a, it was like so exciting. Variety wrote about it. And then the financing for the most part completely fell through. So I was put in this weird position where after about a year of not making any progress, uh, one of my producers suggested, why don't we use the money we have to make a well-produced short and hopefully that'll make it easier to make the feature. And then that way, because it just, it felt wrong having, because we really just didn't have enough money to make a feature film, but we had money that these investors put in. So I spoke to them about it and we all agreed Let's just make a short, get the best actors we can get. Let's really do it right and the best we can. And I'm so glad we made that decision. So hopefully we'll get to make the feature version someday. Um, but it was definitely unusual because I did not write the feature. Sometimes when people like uh, the movie Saw, for example, there was a sequence in that film that they made into a short film before doing the whole thing. I, I didn't have that with this. So I really had to adapt it. So that's how it became the lost weekend. Cause I it went from taking place over a year to one weekend and there were definitely a lot of challenges. And then having to cut several characters, a lot of my favorite scenes from the feature wouldn't make mm -hmm. sense to do in the short. And it was definitely not easy and it was an unusual approach, but I'm so glad we did it. Cause I'm sure, you know, this money that we raised through our investors, you know, it would have kept, would have kept having to pay taxes on it. And it's just the whole mess. So I'm just so happy that we got to make something for them that they, they could show people, we could show people and then getting to do the, this festival run has been amazing and getting to meet so many great people. It's been really wonderful. Do you have any name actors in the lost weekend? Yeah, we, we got very, very lucky. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll run through them. So uh, Reed Burney in it, he plays, is in it. He plays the main character's dad. He um, won a Tony Award a few years ago. He was on House of Cards. He was on The Blacklist. And then Catherine Curtin's in it. Kathy was on Orange is New Black. She was in The Wolf of Wall Street. Basically anything that's shot in New York, she's somehow involved with. She was on Stranger right. Things. She, um, then we have uh, Gracie Gillum, who's a good friend of mine now, who's in uh, Disney's Teen Beach movies. Uh, she was on the sci-fi show Z Nation. She's done a ton of stuff. Libe Barrar, who is in one scene in this. She was on the Amazon show Sneaky Pete. She's on a few episodes of Parenthood, too, which is crazy. Uh, our lead actor, Sam Bartholomew, was on Star Trek Discovery. Uh, Chris Ballant, who's in it, was the lead in my first feature film. And I'm totally probably forgetting someone, but it was insane the amount of luck we had with the actors and i think a lot of that came through one we had a great casting director adrian stern who is absolutely wonderful but then the other thing was we shot it it was the weekend after thanksgiving about two years ago that we shot it and i think that was just the ideal time because people were available surprising like it's just it was very bizarre to see how the cast was working out like it was Kathy Curtin agreeing to it. She's a, she has like three lines in the short and she's like a busy working actress. And she did, gave us, she was with us for the one day we filmed in Long Island. And the week leading up to that, she was doing, I don't know, she was doing some movie. And then she went, she went back down to like the DC area to do like a few episodes of Homeland right after. So it was just yeah. really, I, I felt so fortunate in getting to work with them. And then someone like Reed Bernie, who, you know, is a Tony award winning actor, just seeing him, he got to like do some like kind of emotional stuff in, in a short role. And it was just really great to see that level of talent and to see them, you know, taking something that, you know, I rubbed, you know, I'm some kid who went to five towns and I'm getting to see these, you know, well-versed professional actors taking my work seriously. It was, it was just incredible and a really wonderful experience. And working with the cast was like absolutely one of the highlights of like really any film stuff I've done like this cast and crew was just dynamite which i'm sure you hear all the time on here but like i'm not just saying that like they were great to work with and definitely made me work harder and better from being around them
Wow, that's very impressive. I, did so, I was the primary editor on it as well, which the editor thing is more so a means of uh, budgetary restraint constraints. Yeah. That's the one technical job I know how to do. Um, like if you put a camera in my hands or try to light a scene, oof, I can't do that at all. So I always need to hire someone far more talented for that. So now, do, do you find that when you, uh, well, you had Adrian Stern casting it. So I imagine once they attach a name, it's easy to get the rest of the names because there's a confidence there that, that Absolutely. Uh, it, it's past some kind of scrutiny, right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Libe Barrar, who she's plays the main character's ex-girlfriend, she's just in one scene at the beginning. And she was living in California at the time. And we said, like, we can't afford to fly you out. And, like, if you can't do the part because of that, that's whatever. And she flew herself out, which meant pretty yeah. much the little bit of money she made on this. Like, she probably paid more for her airfare. So <laughs> I asked her, like, when I met up with her in person eventually, I'm like, all right, be honest with me. Why did you do this? And a big part of it was to work with Reed Bernie, even though they didn't have any scenes together. But yeah. she was pretty upfront, like, yeah, I really, I think he's a great actor and I would love to. So that's totally how it works. It's like when you get the one piece, at, at the very least, it, it gets people to respond quicker um, and show interest. And yeah, it, it makes you seem more seasoned. And uh, yeah, it, de it definitely helps once one or two names comes in, the rest is much easier. Yeah, and uh, you know, somebody that has a lot of talent and doesn't really have a name, if they can get into the film, they can piggyback off of them and kind of use that as their, their next stepping stone. But uh, the way it is, I know with funding, you really need some names attached to get the money in. And if you don't have some money, what you gonna do? Exactly. It's very, it's like, it's almost like a chicken before the egg or whatever type scenario because you kind of need to be able to say you can pay some name or, you know, if you're lucky, you have personal relationships with them where you could get them ahead of time. And then in a, really with a, our film, it was a mix because Adrian, we hired to cast the feature version and okay. she started casting that and she got some names attached to that. And then when that money fell through and we went to, on to do the short, she covered the short basically pro bono to kind of help us out. And I, I also just nice. think having her, yeah, it was like, it, it added a legitimacy and it was cool to see like some of the people we were able to get even for yeah. a short, because that's the other thing for a short film, they could go either way. You'll get some actors that will be excited because it's only a day of work, but then you'll get others where it's like, it's a day of work. I don't want to, you know, go out and stand in the cold or whatever, but uh, yeah, we, we were very, very fortunate. Yeah. Now, let me ask you something about the dating and, and the online dating. Do you think that it makes, and this is part of the uh, realization of your movie, I believe, does yeah. it make people more connected or more apart? <laughs> I think it goes either. I think it magnifies, I, I think the sense of connection you could argue is a little false or surface level. But then at the same time, I think it exemplifies loneliness. You don't even have to look at online day anything. Think about social media or whatever. You know, you're having a bad day and you happen to open up Facebook or Instagram and you see that all your friends are on vacation together. It kind of makes you feel terrible. Oh. So, like, I think it's this weird thing where it can go either way. But at the same time, you know, if it's a different kind of experience or, like, you have right now during the pandemic, like, getting to see your family through there and getting to see, like, people's kids, it's really sweet. Um, but I, I think it really goes both ways. And I, I wouldn't trust anyone who d tries to definitively say it is or isn't. Because like, while making this film, I may have been critical of it. Like, you know, I ultimately met a very meaningful person that way in my life. So who would I be to like poo poo it? It's, so it's, I, and like, I don't, I don't think it's that different than meeting people the old fashioned way or whatever. Like if say you like hit it off with someone that, at the supermarket or whatever, yeah, you're kind of getting a sense of who they are, but you don't really know them. You don't know what crazy stuff they might, or what their hardships have been in life. Yeah. So like, I, I think it's just, I, I think it's just made everything kind of more overwhelming and a little more disposable, but at the same time, I, it's, I, don't, I don't think it's necessarily that different than when you first meet someone in any other context. And it's, to me, it's just an extension of kind of the social media lifestyle that's going on right now it is a social media lifestyle let me ask you i understand that there are, are questionnaires that you fill out when you join these online uh, dating sites 
Uh, do you think that people embellish who they are or cover up things? How important is it for people to be honest when they fill those out? That's a good question. So like something that I like to kind of poke fun at. And the, so the way we showed the dating profiles on this, we kind of, instead of having it just be text that you see on the screen, we actually had the actors breaking the fourth wall, talking to the camera, kind of mm -hmm. in a tone that reflected their dating profile. That way when yeah. you would meet the various dates, in real life within the movie, they would be kind of more themselves or whatever. And I think most people either would do one of two things. And sometimes it'd be a little different. You'd get the people that would really try to sound impressed, sound very serious and be like, you know, if you're not at least six feet tall and make six figures, don't talk to me. But then you'd also get people who downplay themselves and will, you know, their thing might just say like, I don't know, just some corny joke and that's it. But then you, and then like, at least from what I can tell, people when you act when they'd actually meet wouldn't necessarily be what's in their profile at all like they could be a totally different person or you know you can meet go out some you hang out with someone once and they're one way and then another and then you realize oh this is very different and it, it was just always interesting to me and this is something i find myself thinking a lot even just on regular social media like i kind of sometimes i see someone like put something out there online i'm like you know people can see this right you know like they see your name next to it so when yeah. you're like whether it's, you know, and it's usually something silly or whatever, but like sometimes like I'll, I'll see someone put like a video online somewhere and be like, you get that like everyone can see. It. Anyway, it, it just, it kind of baffles me. I granted, I'm sure people are looking at my stuff going the same way. Like, oh, look at this guy. It just doesn't even know that people, you know, he's asking, he's trying to raise money for his next film, but he's making fart jokes on Twitter. Forget about him. Yeah, you got to watch it. They say even when yeah. you, you know, you're applying to colleges or for jobs, you know, there are people that, that look up what's going on with you on Instagram and Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Now, how safe do you think it is to try to meet somebody through a dating site? Is it safe? Um, I, I guess I think like you have to kind of take certain comments, like, like common sense type things where, you know, maybe don't meet someone at their house if you've never talked to them, or, you know, public places during the day. I imagine, you know, I imagine that for a woman, it's much more yeah. stressful and potentially dangerous. But, you know, I, I think you kind of got to use your judgment. And then one advantage, I guess, too, is when people have their social media or whatever linked, you could at least you could research someone before you meet yeah, them if you want and kind of get it. And even then you don't you don't know. So like, I think you kind of got to use common sense and like also you know, I, I hear things from people who would like have maybe like a friend that they would purposely have call them like a half hour into the date so they can easily get out of it if it's right. weird. <laughs> but I, you know, I think you can never be too careful. And thankfully, a lot of people, for this sake, at least with people being kind of so online with other parts of their life, you could kind of look someone up and feel, feel it out if it's going to be sketchy or not. How long should the first date be and, and, and or meet up? And where should it be? Oh wow, that's that's a good one. Um, so I would say somewhere, somewhere public, and I don't know. Like I think the quicker the better, and then because you'll just know. I don't like, and this is like keep in mind. Like I've been in a steady relationship now for a while, so I haven't. I thankfully haven't had to deal with this. But I yeah, I'd imagine, it is it is thankfully because it's not easy. It's uh, I, I think it's a, a, a tense type of thing, right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I feel very fortunate to be totally out of that world uh, for the, and for the foreseeable future. I don't see that changing, but you know, I, I don't know. It, and like part, part of me thinks like, especially looking back, like, oh, I wish I always, like, I wish I would always have an excuse to or somewhere else where I'm supposed to be that way, you know, you could limit it to like an hour. Cause I don't know, and like also like, if this doesn't even just apply to that, but I, I, I have a tendency to kind of indulge people too much and be polite. And like, if I don't actually have a reason to leave, like I'll, you know, like I'll hang out at a friend's house and if they try to get me to stay, I'll stay too long. Um, but like, I, I don't know, part of me thinks it would be healthy to kind of, even if you're having a good time, have a, some sort of boundary that way, you know, you don't spend your whole day talking to someone who's completely uh, full of baloney and, you know, you never see again. But. Yeah. Now, do girls ever bring, like, a buddy, another girl with them, like, because they feel maybe a little strange or unsafe? Do they ever come with another girl or they, they generally come just on their own? 
Yeah, I, th- I think on their, I've, I've heard of that before or where someone will have someone like drop them off if it's like, depending on where it is. Um, but yeah, like I, I've heard of people doing, I don't, I don't think I've actually experienced that, but I, it makes a lot of sense. Like I, I, I definitely, you know, if I was in that the position. Prob- the problem is the guy might like the friend better than her. So, you know, they yeah. have to watch out You never that. know. Yeah. <laughs> I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, on the first date, do you think the guy should pay the bill or split it? Okay, so this is something I always, like my girlfriend and I have talked about before. To me, what I would judge someone for is when, as the guy, you go to pay. If the girl doesn't at least pretend to try to contribute, you can kind of be like, huh, I don't, I don't know how I feel. But if they at least go for the reach and then you say, no, 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 I got it. That to me is a sign of good character that you're like, all right, cool. This person okay. wasn't just using you for a free meal. But so, um, so yeah. it, it's character more than the financial end of it. Yeah, it's you, not. You, not you're as trying much to the find financial. out more about the person. Yeah, well, I've I've just I've I've heard like kind of directly from friends of friends of uh, people who like usually it would be like kids in college, like girls in college who basically use a dating app to get free meals regularly. Which like I can't blame them, uh-huh. but they totally <laughs> that's that's definitely a thing. Things are so expensive nowadays. I mean, you'd really be limiting how many dates a guy could take a girl on if he had to pay for everything nowadays, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would you prefer a date skiing, snow tubing, or a horse and sled ride, sleigh, sleigh ride in the Uh, snow? I I think, all right, because... The, the horse and sled ride, like that would be easier to like talk. Skiing would be great if, if you knew how to ski, which I don't. So yeah. I think snow tubing would be fun because then if it's, if it's a, you know, if it's a bad date, you just get on the tube and slide out of there and you, <laughs> you know, you pretend to get hurt or something and be like, oh, I, I can't, I can't be around you anymore. Sorry. I, I, my it leg might hurts. be, it might be a long ride back home in the car though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that would be, yeah, I think I would do that. Cause also on, on some level, like, I don't know. Yeah, go go for the thing that sounds the most fun, but also, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, what would be another perfect date? Would it be going to a ball game, a concert, a winery, or a rifle range? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... I, I like music and concerts, but the problem with that is if you're with someone who doesn't like whatever the band or the singer or whatever, it can be pretty not fun. So I think if you're actually trying to get someone to know someone, even if you're not, don't like wine, that would be the easiest one to talk. But then again, you go to some sort of shooting range. If the person's really terrible, if you got, you're loaded and ready. You could end it right there. But <laughs> and I wouldn't actually ever <laughs> do that. Okay. What's your preference as far as uh, movies? Comedy, horror, mystery, love story, or musical? All right. Out of those, I guess when comedies, when they're good, which is like incredibly subjective. But honestly, even when I see a bad comedy, I kind of like to deconstruct why I don't think it works. And there's a lot um, to the craft of that. Um, I wish I was more into like horror movies, for example, because there's a, as a filmmaker, that's like one of the easiest genres to get funding for, like where you don't even really need names because people, really? people pay to see bad horror movies on purpose. Like there's an audience for it. But yeah, I, I, I guess coming out of those, and I, I've been trying to appreciate musicals more of, uh, like every now and then I'll see one that I like, but uh, yeah, and I, I don't know. I only saw West Side Story for the first time about a month ago, and uh, I thought it was okay. But like, uh, but yeah. Oh, it's, you had you had to see the original with George Chakiris. Yeah. And Natalie Wood. That that mm-hmm. yeah. You had to see that. Yeah. You have to see that one. Okay. So anyway, Ryan, uh, when is your film going to be shown? Tuesday, October six, seven thirty. I want to give a shout out my friend Josh Johnson. His movie Alienated is playing at the drive-in as part of life. I don't know which day his is playing, but that's one that everyone should check out. It's pretty cool. He made a, you know, he made a sci-fi alien feature film for very little money in Long cool. Island. So I want to give give my friend a nice plug there because uh, I'm glad he's getting that experience with his first feature. That's his first feature. Well, good for him. Yeah. Good for him. Well, I, I wish you all the luck. I mean, 
the best Thank director. You. That's quite an uh, an honor to be nominated for. And you're such a young guy. Yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely an honor, and uh, it'll be exciting. And hopefully, my ego won't get too out of control from all of this. Oh, I'm yeah. sure it will. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a website where we can find out everything about you? Sure, I have a very out of date website, RyanO'LearyFilms.com. And then on Instagram, Twitter, most social media, if you look up The Bloody Mess, that's usually my username. And uh, The Lost Weekend has a Facebook page, The Lost Weekend Movie. We're out of time. And I want to say that it was wonderful speaking with you. And I know that you're going to have a very successful future. You really know what you're doing. Okay. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. Bye, Ryan. I had a great Bye. time, too. Take care. Bye now. Bye.